What's up, people? Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing good. This is Gufran, and you're watching Indian Grad in Germany. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. And without further delay, let's start with today's podcast video. So, in today's session, I have with me Shrikant. He is studying in University of Stuttgart, Masters in Electrical Engineering. So, this course is also quite interesting, and I thought, why not to invite him on the YouTube video and let's talk more about this course. So, Shrikant, thanks a lot for coming on the channel and. Uh, we'll start with your brief introduction so you can guide us what you have studied, what was your academic background, what internships and everything. So you can discuss this all shortly and then we elaborate and discuss all those things further in the video. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. I did my bachelor's back in India in electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, so I finished in 2018. After that, I worked in India as a full time as an electrical engineer for three years. Okay. And then I came to Germany in October 2021. I have started master's in electrical engineering with majors, power electronic systems and technologies. Uh, and presently I am uh, in my final semester. I'm doing my master thesis. So that is my brief introduction. Thanks. Then that, that was pretty much uh, crisp and clear. Yeah. So moving forward with the discussion, uh, as you said, like you have three years of prior experience while coming to Germany. So uh, what do you think uh, having experience, uh, does it help or should a student come fresher? I think it depends. Like mm -hmm. uh, if, if you are doing in the same domain, then it definitely helps you. The experience really helps you to get the internship, the part-time jobs, and uh, even the full time also, because mm -hmm. it will it will have some skills beforehand before you come to Germany. And also, you know what is happening in this in that specific sector. So I would mm -hmm. say it is definitely helpful. But if you are a fresher, then also it's fine because mm -hmm. uh, here I have seen most of the Germans after finishing the bachelor's, they directly start, the, start their master's. Uh, they don't break anything. That is also a good thing, actually. Because yep. what I felt is after giving a three years break and again studying, uh, it was a little difficult for me at the beginning, but then somehow it got Yeah, nice. I mean, it always have its pros and cons. Like uh, even if you are overqualified, sometimes it's it's bit difficult then for the industries in Germany and like having a right balance. I don't know how it is, but uh, like I believe like ideally two to three years of experience is also beneficial uh, when it comes to internships, full-time opportunities. Uh, and also, as you said correctly, like the right experience, because in Germany, it, it, yeah. this this right experience is very much important when you start your full-time working, because uh, if you have done something else priorly, and then if you're working in something else, they do check it strictly, like whether it's related or not. But yeah, good. Uh, so moving forward uh, with this university and course, so how did you come up with this university or did you apply it somewhere else and was uh, United States or Canada and Australia were also in your consideration or Germany was the main focus? Okay, so Germany was the main focus for me since the beginning because of the fees issue, because uh, I cannot afford a huge loan uh, mm -hmm. as per my present situation. So Germany was my uh, main uh, selection after that. Uh, after doing three years of work, uh, I decided to go into power electronics field because I felt that is more interesting to me. And I felt uh, in future I can work much better into that. So uh, I started searching uh, for the power electronics courses in Germany, which, mm -hmm. which are offered in English. Okay. So there were very few courses in English, actually. Uh -huh. uh, in German, there were available electromobility and so on. But in English, there were very few courses out of which University at Stuttgart was one of it, and it has a very good course in power electronics field. And then I applied here and I got the offer. Apart from this, I also applied to Hochschule uh, Darmstadt mm -hmm. uh, with the power uh, with the for majors of power systems. Uh, I also got admit in that. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting to know your journey, how you came up to the course. Uh, one question that I have is uh, now moving forward with the course discussion. So as the course is master's in electrical engineering, so uh, you you said like you are now studying power electronics. So uh, electrical engineering uh, in this course also have modules of electronics where students can take modules and then study. Like how's the course structure de decided and how how many semesters are there, how the semesters are distributed and so on. Okay, so in master's in electrical engineering, we have six majors mm -hmm. basically. Uh, out of which power electronics, 
then SIP, then smart sensors, mm-hmm. uh, then communication systems, and so on. Okay. Uh, and the core structure is like uh, we have to take six modules in majors and uh-huh. five modules in minors, or you can say, uh, and five modules in minors. Mm-hmm. And uh, other than that, there is a research project. You can call it a mini thesis, which is of fifteen credits. Okay. One lab course. Uh, and one three credit extracurricular activity and apart from this there is a thesis so mm-hmm. it's all in all a 120 credit course okay uh, yeah so and uh, as per them uh, it should be finished in four semesters but there is no limit actually yeah uh, students generally finish in two to three years yeah so, so generally it's, it's flexible us. right and here... yeah it's fully flexible like what modules you want to select what modules it depends upon what modules are offered in that particular semester Mm-hmm. So based on that, we can choose which module I can opt from my majors and from my minors. Correct. And minors is a pool of subjects. There are a lot of subjects available in the minors. So you have uh, you can decide in which direction you want to go or right. like that. Yeah. So yeah. As, as also discussed like previously in the other videos, so it's it's quite flexible in most of the universities, uh, public universities in Germany that uh, you can decide your course by yourself and there's no strict timeline to complete it in two years. You always have the flexibility and that clearance or to, to complete it in maybe three years or some, something, not not like four years or something, but three years is like yeah, three years most, is most fine, of yeah, the exactly. most of the students they do complete. Uh, yeah. One question to add up on this. So you said it's four semesters. So the last semester is dedicated for master thesis. Yes, generally it's dedicated for the master thesis, but it depends. Like for me, I had one module remaining, so I have given that module exam mm-hmm. and also in parallel to my master thesis. So it's not fixed that the last semester is for master thesis. It's like whenever you want mm-hmm. to start. Yeah, and... you can also start in between the semester as well. Okay, got it. And is there some compulsory internship or project study that you have to do uh, outside the university or in, in, in the university with some chair or it's it's not mandatory? Uh, uh, there is no mandatory internship in this course, but mm-hmm. uh, there is a research project, project, as I already said, which is of 15 credits. Mm-hmm. You can say it's a kind of internship, but you have to do in the university itself. Okay, There are some rules uh, if you want to do in the company, but it's very difficult to get into a company with the research project. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this this is also quite uh, important thing to add up. Uh, generally, in technical universities, or uh, as as he said, uh, sometimes when you bring your proposal to to the company, uh, so it, it is necessary that uh, the professors in the university and the people in the company they should agree on it. And most of yeah. the times it's it's a bit difficult to convince both of them as only either one of them conv- is convinced because professors, yeah. they need the theoretical and research stuff uh, through, through that uh, project study or maybe that research. And yeah. uh, companies, they want their practical uh, or their practical work to be achieved. So it's a bit difficult to convince both of them and bring on the table together. But yeah, uh, yeah. it's interesting, right? Uh, so... Yeah. You you can opt for, but it's not compulsory, correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, research project is compulsory, 15 mm-hmm. credits you have to do in the university itself. In the master thesis, if I say, as you said, it's very difficult to get, like, to get a topic in a company is easy, but to mm-hmm. get the approval from the professor is a tough part because it uh, the professor looks into the scientific goals, yeah. how is the work structure and everything. And apart from that, it also depends upon how the company is collaborated with the that specific department True. because of the da- uh, data sharing issue. So yeah. the professor is like, if I <laughs> give you the topic and if I don't get the data and anything of the report, how I can give you 30 credits out of it? So Correct. that's the yep. issue, actually. Yeah. yeah. M- moving forward with the course requirements and admission process or admission criteria. Uh, so how was it during your time? two years before. I mean, now things may have changed, but as, as general guidelines, uh, how is it? I mean, I'll also link down the uh, the university link so that they can check the updated regulations and rules. But uh, during your time, how was the academic criteria? So the course requirement for this course, Master's in Electrical Engineering is very simple. Your mm-hmm. first thing is the English language requirements. So that can be fulfilled with seven band in IELTS or 95 points in TOEFL order. Or uh, you can show that uh, you did your bachelor's in English. 
mm-hmm. uh, for at least six semesters, then even the language certificate is fine. Okay. Other than that, uh, your bachelor's transcript will matters will matter a lot in this because they will look into the specific modules based on uh, which modules you did in your bachelor's. Based on that, they will give some points, and also your grade. So based on the grade, they will give some points. They will merge it, and if you cross some specific mark, you will get the admit or you will get the rejection. So okay. it's pretty simple. There is no work experience required for this course specifically. Uh-huh. And, uh, and also, uh, sorry to interrupt. And also, you can uh, check this uh, admission regulations on the website. It's in German PDF. You can always check it. Okay, yeah. so uh, understood. But uh, what about like, is there some VPD requirement or uh, like a pre-check or something? Or there, there was nothing of such kind. There, there, there was no VPD requirement for me at least. But right mm-hmm. now, I think the APS certificate is required. But I think. Uh, it should be checked right now what is the and situation and like during your time what was the minimum grade uh, for the students to get into this course um uh, there is no specific grade but mm-hmm. i think even the 8.0 cgpa or i have seen 7.7 cgpa also getting the admission and i and at the same time i have also seen guys who have got rejection with 8.3 or 8.5 Okay. because it depends upon the modules you did in your bachelor's so uh-huh. depends on depending upon that they give points and based on the points they give the admit so okay. yeah okay got there it there is no specific answer <laughs> for that is and and like how is the batch size uh that is also not fixed mm-hmm. and um i cannot say but approximately you can say 50 to 60 students you see in every semester they are coming Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least fifty to sixty. And, and what, what uh, there, about... are yeah, there are many Indians. Yeah, there are many Indians in the batch, and there is a big community, Indian community in Stuttgart, and uh-huh. it feels really good in Stuttgart living with the Indians. Okay, so. uh, as you said about the diversity part, like there are many Indians, but is it like the batch is completely of Indians, or there are some other students from different nationalities? Uh, there are students from German Germany. There are students from China. Taiwan, and also okay. few from Pakistan, uh-huh. and maybe some other European countries. So yeah, there okay. are some students. Yeah. Okay. Uh, coming to the point of fees, uh, tuition fees, uh, is this course free, or you have to pay some fees for it? Yeah. So this is the uh, con of this course, you can uh-huh. say, because uh, we have a fifteen hundred euros tuition fee every semester. Okay. Plus, uh, there are some other charges which add up to around 1700. Mm-hmm. So the fees per semester is 1700 euros for okay. the international students. If you are coming from an EU country, then it's pretty cheap. Like, Yeah, only the yeah. semester contribution then? Only the semester contribution, which is less than 200 euros. Okay. Is this because uh, the university is in Baden-Württemberg? That's why they exactly. have... Mm-hmm. Exactly. This is because the university is in Baden-Württemberg because all universities which are in this state cost 15, 1,500 euros for the international students and that's the most, uh, you can say, the yeah, tough part. I can understand. <laughs> and uh, in, in the semester contribution, which, is, which you said it's less than 200 euros, uh, which you have to pay yeah. on top of 1,500, what is covered in that 200 euros, uh, like transportation or so on? Yeah. Uh, Previously, it covered the transportation, and but transportation is also uh, only for the Stuttgart region. Mm-hmm. And it is also like Monday to Friday after 7 p.m. and Saturday, Sunday, full days. And even okay. the uh, holidays, you can get the full days. So, it was like that. But since the 49 euros ticket, uh-huh. they have stopped to charge this transportation charges and all. Mm-hmm. And now we have only option to take the 49 euros ticket to travel anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. What about the part-time opportunities in Stuttgart? And you you can tell like how is the city like in terms of part-time opportunities? In terms of part-time opportunities, there are a lot of opportunities. If you want to do a technical job or a non-technical job, there are so many companies here. Uh, that's why students are able to pay their fees and also <laughs> uh, yeah living here. So. I think there are so many opportunities available here. You can come you, and, and also you can approach in the university. There are a lot of EVs available mm-hmm. in the departments. 
So yeah, it depends on our skills and uh, where yep. I want to work and how I want to work, how flexible I want to work yep. and all those stuff. But there are so many opportunities I can say. True. So, so the people who are watching this video, he, what he is saying is definitely true because in Stuttgart, there are different companies. Uh, I would say a lot of companies in Stuttgart. It is the industrial hub. So you may find ample opportunities, uh, specifically if you want to go or work in companies, but also in terms of odd jobs, uh, there are ample opportunities there. How is Stuttgart in terms of cost of living? Yeah, the cost of living is high. If uh -huh. you compare with the north of Germany, I can say. But uh, if I say the apartment which I am living in Stuttgart, it's like it will cost around from 300 to 400 euros, uh -huh. student apartment. But okay. if you live in a Vege, it will cost something around 400 to 500 euros. Okay. Yeah, even yeah. the groceries are a bit uh, expensive, I feel, I felt overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. Stuttgart is pretty expensive. Okay, so that was uh, for accommodation. Uh, what about the full-time opportunities or alumni who uh, who studied your course and where are they working? Or in general, what, what is your opinion related to full-time opportunities? Uh, the full-time opportunities are really good in Stuttgart as well as in the Germany. Uh, the, uh, the seniors who did this course are right now in on-semi Infineon Technologies and mm -hmm. Robert Bosch. Mercedes, Porsche, so such kind of companies. If I say the profile, it's mostly related to auto, autonomous driving, uh, electromobility, power electronics, and such kind of fields. So, yeah, there are so many opportunities in Stuttgart as well as in, if you consider the whole Germany, the course is really, really good. The modules are very much in depth. So, if you are interested, it's really good course, I would say. Yeah, uh, I mean, definitely, as I said, uh, power electronics, uh, it is now the industry of future because uh, there's a lot of transition going on in the semiconductor industry and particularly in the automotive field because from the regular in internal combustion engines, now industries are transforming more towards the battery electric vehicles and, and so on. So electromobility, yeah. autonomous driving. So definitely for, for students, uh, this is beneficial if you want to go in the field of power electronics. Not just in the technical, yeah. but I would also say in the management field, there are ample opportunities because these are the industries which are booming at present. And I would say they would boom for the next 10 or 15 years or so because uh, that's yeah. the industry for the future. Shrikant, uh, finally moving towards the conclusion, uh, what is your opinion or genuine feedback related to this course? Or for the students who are coming to Germany, uh, what is your feedback? What should they be prepared of? Or maybe some pros and cons you can say in general, not just related to the course, but what you feel about studying in Germany. Yeah, so if I say about my course, um, uh, as I said, my major is power electronics. So the course is really, really good. It, they have so many in-depth research oriented uh, modules. Mm -hmm. uh, so the those who want to go into the research and development, this course is really, really good, I would say. And the only con which I already mentioned is fees, but uh, you can manage your fees uh, with the part-time opportunities because there are so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. You can work in university, you can work uh, in any company in nearby Stuttgart and in Stuttgart. So I would say this is a very good option for you all. Uh, and for studying in Germany, I would say I had a very good experience since the last two years. Like I learned a lot of things. Uh, not only the technical, also other extracurricular and everything, like I learned cooking and stuff. So, yeah, I can say the last two years were like a roller coaster ride, but it was a really good for me. And I really loved it, uh, the whole environment of Germany. And yeah, that's what I would say. So yeah. all the best to all the students who want to apply or who are coming to Germany, because this is really a good opportunities here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Shrikant, yeah. for the genuine feedback and opinion. I uh, will definitely recommend this course to the upcoming students. And thanks a lot for coming on the YouTube channel and uh, sharing your thoughts and views related to this course, not just the course, but also in general related to studying in Germany. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. It was really good.